What was your role in the project? Uh, my role was creating the animation for the end scene where the monkey flipped off the camera. <laughs> what else did you do? Um, worked a lot with my group, collaborated, uh, found a lot of uh, some of the sound effects for the movie. Um, and yeah, just worked with the whole project. In this project, um, I learned a lot about Alice. I've never worked with Alice before, so that was interesting. Also, just group skills in general, communicating with people, make sure everything gets done on time. What did you think about the program we had to work with? I, I, don't, I don't really like it that much. Um, it was it was a good learning experience, but the program itself crashed a lot. And I'm not proud of it. Are you happy with how the project came out? I think I'm very happy. Yeah, I think it came out really good. So when it comes to the Alice project, um, I feel like we all contributed um, a good amount. Uh, Tony was uh, definitely the leader of the group. Um, she uh, instructed us on exactly what to do. Um, and I feel like we all came out with a little more knowledge on the program. Uh, Tony seemed to have had prior knowledge with the program. I had, uh, but I hadn't done it since like freshman year of high school. Um, overall, I think our project worked out very well. Uh, according to like the response it got in class, uh, I guess it was everyone's favorite. So that's awesome. Uh, yeah, I feel like uh, we worked pretty well together, um, and I think all around it was, a, it was a great effort. So this is where I built everything off of, and then uh, you know, I connected all the methods that I made for all the different objects within here. So I have the camera method, and then monkeys turn around, and <laughs> they turn to face the camera, I think, and then they turn away from the camera and start walking away. And we have some sound effects built in here. And then they talk, and we see the camera move over to the bananas, and we add bananas as night falls. And then the camera moves away from the bananas to a wider scene, and a fox walks in. Monkeys all turn along the fox, and we get some really ominous music. I'm not really sure where that starts here, but I know it does. And I have a method called scared, which just means they all get really kind of wide-eyed. And within these methods, I tended to use uh, random ranges. That way each monkey would have a different uh, random range that they were using. So they would all move slightly differently, maybe not noticeably, but hopefully in most cases, maybe not the walking. It looked different enough that it would didn't look simultaneous. And then at the end, we pan over all the monkeys and kind of see their faces and... He freezes them, and of course, memorably, he flips off the camera. And so I was pretty much responsible for um, putting all the code together. Sometimes the guys would uh, animate, I think Adam was the one, he actually animated a toucan, and we decided we didn't really like it because the, the, uh, the sprite Alice had built in for the toucan was just wasn't as good as the fox one, because the fox one's actually pretty phenomenal, in my opinion. Um, let's see if I can get to this page with the sprites. One thing I didn't like about Alice is that if I change the camera view or pan around in the scene, it actually permanently changes it. So I don't really want to do that, but... So we have the monkeys, and I was pretty confident in those sprites and the trees and things. I didn't want to add this toucan that didn't have this really jagged looking sprite. So he did the animation for those, and they did some of the animations, um, some of the methods that I, that I attached, and then I would put them all together and, um, you know, create the final version. And uh, the guys also got all the sound effects and figured out how to get the sound effects in, because for some reason I just couldn't figure that out. It seemed like it only worked sometimes, which was really strange. And what we did notice is that if your sound effect clip was longer than the animation, the animation... Uh, the animation within that loop, the it wouldn't move on to the next loop because it would wait for the sound file to finish. So we had to really crop our sound files. But we, after we cropped our sound files, we found out that Alice had a way to do that, which has um surprising number of capabilities. Even though it is a bit frustrating to use, yeah, you can do custom audio and some options, and you can actually control that. So that's how it's all put together, and quite a few methods, some of them are simpler than others, but I'll show you the final result.